Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, this is a new week, and I'm so excited. You know why? Because I know the Word of God is coming to you the same way it's coming to me. And listen, that is the sweetest thing that can happen to anyone. You know, God said this, and Jesus repeated it, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that, take note, that proceeds present continuous that proceeds from the mouth of God. <laughs> now, now, when he says proceeds from the mouth of God is what you're supposed to live by. It means on God's part, he is going to ensure that words are coming from his mouth to you. But then you on your own part, you've got to ensure you are receiving it and you are living by it. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this opportunity to reveal your truth. Oh, we open our hearts to understanding. Your wisdom flows freely. And I pray today that burdens be removed and yokes be destroyed even as we take hold of your truth. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, last week Friday, we, we, we stopped at chapter 7 and verse, yeah, verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Now, we're still on 1 Corinthians. And I told you, we're going to be here until the Lord says, do something else. If not, we'll see how we're going to finish it. You know, every day I say we're going to take more chapters or read, you know, more verses. But you know how it is. We stop at the place that the word of the Lord begins to come. See, praise God. All right. So, so we're going to continue from there. And I know that... Things are going to shift in your life this week. I know that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 7 from verse, let me just read verse 8 and then do a recap. And I know here he was talking about marriage relationship and, and how to handle such. So he says in verse 8, I say therefore unto the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Say it is good for them to abide even as I. That's himself, Paul, talking. And I told you on Friday that for some reason, Paul wasn't married. Now, whether he was widowed or, or he just never married, it's not clear. But he was a single man. Praise God. So, he's telling them that, look, it's, it's good for them to be like him. In other words, to stay, he said, the unmarried and widows, to stay single as he is. And I told you something um, last week Friday. That, that statement is not entirely correct. That's why he said it. It's not a command from God. This is just me thinking. You know, and then it depends from the standpoints from which he is looking at it. Now, from God's own standpoint, the wisdom of God from the beginning said it is not good that a man should be alone. When God says something is not good, believe me, it's not good. It doesn't matter how you see it. It doesn't matter the challenges that you have seen with it. He said it is not good. The wisdom of God said it is not good. So, now, you need to understand that when Paul said something, it doesn't expressly mean that is the mind of God concerning it. So, Paul here was expressing his thoughts, see. All right, so let's go on. But if they cannot contain, now you see that? If they cannot contain, so if God, now I know Jesus had said, there are certain kind of people that become eunuch. You know, eunuch means those who have decided to abstain themselves and for certain, for several reasons. Now, if God commands you to do that, he's going to give you the grace and the strength for it. You understand what I'm saying? God's not going to tell you, oh, oh go become a eunuch. And then every day you're suffering, you're feeling sexual urge. And, oh, oh, I don't know how to contain it. Now, that, that means God didn't tell you to do that. You're doing it for religious sake or for your own selfish or whatever other reason. But not God. If God commands you to do something, he's going to give you the grace to do it. So much so that people ask you, how do you do it? You say, it's normal to me. Now, that's how you feel. It's normal to you. Praise God. So, so he said, but if they cannot contain them, if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to born. Now you see that. There are some people who have chosen, for example, you have in the Catholic church. There are some people who have chosen to um, be priests 
And then, you know, the, the laws, I don't know if that have changed now. I think there was a time there was a move to change that. That a priest is not supposed to, is a priest or a reverend father now, it's not supposed to, I, I'm not a Catholic, so I don't know, uh, I, can, I cannot be accurate with those details, but I'm just sharing the overview, you know, that they're not supposed to marry. Now, there are people who are graced. They are just focused on the work, but not all of them are. So now, when you find yourself burning, you say, look, it is better to say, hey, um, whoever is in charge, Bishop, I have tried for this number of years. I think I want to change my vow. I want to marry. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not sinning. Now that's what Paul says. He says, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Now when you don't get married and you're there born and you're sinning against your body, you're sinning against yourself. Oh yes, you are. All right then. And unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Did you see that? When you get married, he says, don't depart. Let not the wife depart from the husband. But if, but and if she departs, let her remain unmarried or reconcile to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Two important things he said here. He says, if you're married as a woman, don't leave your husband. If you have any reason to leave your husband, whatever good reason you have, oh, he's beating me, oh, he doesn't treat me well, oh, he don't. If you decide, I'm, I'm going to walk out of this marriage, okay, fine. But he says, you don't marry. So why? Because when you get married, that would be adultery. You know, sometimes people go, look, you know, when we talk about these things, people go and say, you know what, I think um, uh, this, this thing is, is going too far. Or, uh, you, how can, how can, how can. Now, I want, to, I want to explain something to you. He said here that, if, but if she departs, let her remain un unmarried. Or be reconciled to her husband. Now, why, is, why would she want to... Um, um, marry why would she want to remarry because for of course one she she wants uh, because of sexual uh, because of sexual intercourse or um, whatever it is but it still boils down to having someone over her life and now he says if if she departs if she decides to leave her husband then she's got to make up her mind to remain unmarried no she's not going to bring herself under the authority of another man and if she if, I told you, if she does that, that is adultery. Now, he said also that a man should not put away his wife. Now, someone asks this question, okay, what if, okay, what if a lady who has divorced her husband remarries? It's adultery. No matter how you look at it, it's adultery. It's adultery. Now, the next question we need to ask, see, when we say it's adultery, we say, ah, why would God? Now, the next thing you're going to ask, now, go, go study the things Jesus taught about um, divorce and things like that. Go, go, go study. Go find out what Jesus said. Carefully study it. Now, every remarriage, now, except when death was involved, maybe the spouse died, see, especially for the woman now. <clears throat> Now, it's, it's amazing that uh, when we say adultery, people don't really understand what the concept of adultery is. See, people just think that adultery is because you had sex with someone else. See, there's a difference between fornication and adultery. I need you to understand that. Now, when it is adultery, study scriptures carefully, and you'll find this out, that most times, Adultery is, uh, adultery is related more with married women than the men. Can a man commit adultery? Yes, he can commit adultery. Can a woman, or, or, or can, a, of course we all know women can commit adultery, but can a man commit adultery? Yes, he can commit adultery. But you see, funny enough, a man commits adultery not just because he had an affair with someone else. Study scriptures carefully. A man commits adultery when he neglects his wife, when he, 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 he neglects taking care of his wife and go out to take care of someone else. Now, he is committing adultery. 
I need you to follow me carefully so you don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm telling you scriptures now. When a man decides what, what he was supposed to be giving to his wife, not just sex now. Sex, taking care, um, giving her a shelter and things like that. Whatever care he's supposed to be giving to his wife. If he stops doing that and starts doing that to another person, now he is committing adultery. Now, the fact that a man just... Now, that's why even in scripture, you find that a man can marry more than one wife. And it's not even though it's against you know, our, our culture as Christians, but it is not a crime. It is not a crime as, for example, Paul talking to Timothy, he said the only thing is such people should not be given leadership position in church. He didn't say, you know, you know there, are, there are certain churches who go, you have to divorce the second wife and stay with the first wife to someone who's married multiple wives now. But you see, adultery may not be in the question there. I'm telling you the truth. You know why? You see, if a man decides, okay, I'm going to take care of everybody the same way, then you can't hold him against, you can't hold it against him as adultery. But when a man neglects his wife and starts taking care of someone else, then adultery is involved. Now, a woman living because see, when a woman gets married, she comes under the cover of her husband. Now, the moment she steps out of that cover, now I'm going to tell you something that will shock you. A woman doesn't have to have sex to commit adultery. You need to understand this. Praise God. See, I was shocked one day. I, I, I never heard this from anyone. I never, I was dealing with an issue and then the Lord spoke to me. What did the Lord say to me? I was dealing with an issue. And what was the issue? A lady had borrowed money from another lady and, and she needed to pay that money. So while I was, we we're talking about it and, and, and talking to, praying about it to get the wisdom of God. She needed a miracle. So I was standing in faith with her. And then the Lord spoke to me. Because I was asked, I said, Lord, how do we handle this issue now? And then the Lord spoke to me. He said, she's committing adultery. I said, how? And then the Lord said to me, he said, the fact that she took money without her husband's consent do you understand what I'm saying? It's adultery. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> I was like, Lord, no, no, no. Let's be serious. Yes. If you go to do anything outside your husband's consent, something your husband does not approve, and such thing brings you under the bondage of any person, whether a man or a woman, you're committing adultery. Why is it adultery? Because you are given the right over someone apart from your husband to control your life. You see why it's adultery? Now that's why the sex between a married woman and someone else other than her husband is called adultery. Because number one, her husband is not aware of it. And, and you know, because the husband is not aware, well, that person can actually control her life. So she's got two masters right now. See? And Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. You will either despise one and obey the other. It, 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 you can't please the two the same way. Now that's why it's, um, it is called adultery. You need to understand it. Because there is a cover. And she took herself out of that cover. Now that's why Jesus said, if a woman does that, the man has every right, if he wants to, to divorce her. Why? Because already she's taken herself out of that covering and yielded to another person. Is this too high? Now, if it's not the Lord that had spoken that to me, I wouldn't have, I would have like, ah, please, 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 we're going too far on this. But I heard the Lord concerning it. And it's, it's left for you to believe or not to believe. But like I always say, go before the Lord and say, Lord, what, what, what Pastor just just talked about now? Please, I want you to talk to me about it. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that's why it's good when the word of God comes to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Oh, thank you for understanding today as we yield ourselves to you more and more. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a good day today. Go out, shine, be blessed. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.